Hey there patrons, welcome to the October Summer Witch Collaboration video. We begin as normal, gathering some references to create a sense of mood within our brain. And bearing those in mind, we try to create something super special. We measure out our gum tape and stretch the paper to the board by wetting the adhesive side of the tape and sticking it along our guidelines. Then we wash it down gently with a hockey brush just to lift up any surface imperfections and to train the paper to the flat surface. After blow drying it, we can begin drawing at our piece. You lovely patrons voted for a fairy tale witch, but also a modern witch. So I thought to put a modern spin on an existing fairy tale witch. My automatic instinct was to go to the candy witch from Hansel and Gretel, but I have this issue where I don't like to go with my first instinct. So instead, I went back to one of my favorite fairy tales, the Snow Queen, and decided to do a piece around the Witch of the Ever Summer Garden, which, you know, hence the name, I'm calling it the Summer Witch. But to put a modern spin on her, I thought I would do something cute. Something real cute. One of the major issues for practitioners of modern Wicca or any of the pagan religions is that a lot of them don't have a lot of space to work with. So you see a lot of space saving rituals and activities much like ritual baths. So I like to think that this version of the Summer Witch lives in a dense city uh, like New York. And so she doesn't have a lot of space for an actual garden so she does all of her rituals in the bath. She keeps as many flowers as possible to recreate the feel of the dense summer garden. As another nod to the story, I have decided to fill the place with a bunch of summer flowers, except roses, as she likes to remove the roses from her garden to not remind the girl of her previous life. But I do have a single rose in her hand just to show the, the importance of it, you know. I decided to go with a color scheme that is meant to be uh, bright and to create a sense of teeming life and, and warmth, but also a kind of dangerous, toxic undertone that convey that she, while she isn't a violent person, she isn't terribly kind or safe or healthy, given she kidnaps a child. I mean, she only wants to love the child, but I mean, you can't just go around kidnapping kids, you know? And now that the ritual is set, we've got the drawing finished, I want to create our toxic color schemes. And, um, anybody have any thoughts on colors? Uh, did somebody say green and purple? Uh, well, that's a nice idea. Let's go with that. 
In order of paint appearance, we have the Daniel Smith Wisteria, Daniel Smith Green Gold, Daniel Smith Duochrome Aquamarine mixed with Windsor Newton Cobalt Green, Daniel Smith Undersea Green, Windsor Newton Indian Yellow, and the unpainted shadow color is a combination of Daniel Smith's Thalo Turquoise, Payne's Gray, and Lamp Black. After washing down all the areas that we want to have color with an oval wash brush, we start dabbing on our base colors. Oh, look at those blooms. Because Hot Press doesn't have quite the same soak and saturation characteristics, you can see the paper is already drawing in a few areas. Once you're satisfied with your base layer, blow dry to set the paint and re-stretch the paper as it's probably started to pucker and buckle in some areas. If you leave it like this, it will continue to do that until paint no longer goes anywhere but the pooling areas. So you want to make sure to do this every so often. Alright, more layering. Focusing now on carving out shapes, details, and the first steps towards deeper contrast and a better value range. never made anything with such a dense vegetation before and I think my unwillingness to tackle it really shows. <laughs> we need to build up some confidence so we move from the plants to the bath water. I'd like it extra murky and swampy please. <laughs> I'm ready to try again on the plants. Let's not focus on the whole thing and instead focus on the purple flowers. That'll make it easier, yeah? If we try to separate it into different subjects, it should be easier to comprehend and tackle instead of looking at the big picture, flower-wise. Mm -hmm. 
Nope. Still too turnt. Yellow time. Okay. Let's try again. Let's break the bunch into visual differences with a new color. Oh look, other places need this color. That's horribly convenient. Oh, there's just the, the same leaves are in the water all of a sudden. Wow, I didn't realize. On. Well, I guess the bathtub needs some work. See you, Moon. I'm not fooling anyone. Okay. Confidence must be up. With our deep shadow colors, we paint outlines for brighter leaves to make the bunch look more dense. I guess. Ooh, can't even be mad. I love moss. Comparing the bundle to the rest of the scene, it almost looks out of place. So to get it back in our desired color range, I'm giving it a wash of our green gold and dabbing the darker nooks with undersea before coming back with the phthalo mixture. It should balance it all out pretty nicely. Thank you. 
feeling the pale wisteria has reached the end of its usefulness, we add some Daniel Smith Rose of Ultramarine to create a deeper, richer color that is still related, and then blow dry to set our work. Oh yeah, check out that purple. You know, you could try to convince me that green and purple aren't one of the best combos of all time, but you'd be wrong and I don't like to associate with liars, so don't even try. Now, with a semi-stiff bristled brush, usually with something that's at least half synthetic, as synthetic works best for this, we start lifting pigment from the painting. This helps lighten areas which got too dark, adding form, softening gradients, and adding the bases for highlights. That's a mighty chunk. Chunky boy. Still lifting.
now for ink. Off screen, I'm mixing up some ink from my Derwent Ink Tense set, specifically a pale purple and a chartreuse. out with the phthalo mixture, going to add details I feel like I've missed. This point is pretty much a push and pull between uh, the deepest shadows and the lightest highlights, just trying to create better sense of form. And now for the chartreuse ink we mixed up. Implied surface tension. Delicious. Now if that ain't just the cutest boy in all the land. Feeling unhappy with our overall contrast, I'm going ham with some dark ink. Let's hope I don't overdo it.
dyed with dark ink. Now let's use some white ink. It's fine tech time. Here comes the gold. If you didn't catch that, these are fine tech's metallic paints. Sorry about that. dry to set and it's time for line work specifically with our sakura pigma micron pens here's where the beauty of hot press paper comes out using pens on this paper is incredible it's a real pain in the ass to line on cold press the texture just completely soaks up the pen and dries it out and it's so horrible but on a nice smooth surface like this it's just a dream it's like it was made for it. Because it was. Or, you know, unless your pen is already dying, then nothing's gonna help you. <laughs> So, how 
are you guys doing? Do you have a favorite pen brand? Oh boy, I think I've overdone it. Ah well. it thank you guys so so much for your support and for voting for this subject i know this did take quite a while to get out and i apologize profusely this was a wonderful challenge um and i hope you enjoyed watching it i can't wait to see what you guys vote for next and i look forward to catching up on the backlog of videos for you thank you again so much for everything that you do for me and and letting me grow as an artist by supporting me. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.